If you're looking for a laptop for the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, it's important to know at which level you need which performance and specs for each of the programs. So let's say you're an artist or you're a designer or you're a photographer. What do you need for the specific Adobe InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop? And then you're a motion designer. What about After Effects? How much performance there? And then talking about video editing. So Premiere Pro, that's what we're gonna get into. We're gonna start from the budget end of laptops and work all the way up to the high end. And as we're going through the laptops, I'm gonna have a little icon indicating the program that I feel this laptop is capable of handling. Let's get right into it, starting off at the budget category. This is going to be the entry level for designers, artists, and photographers. As you can see, these laptops start at 8 gigs of RAM with the Apple MacBook Air M1 with the possibility of a 16 gig upgrade. Now, all of these laptops will be great for Photoshop. This is going to be the starting point, in my opinion, for Photoshop. You're going to have some U-series processors, you're going to have an H-series, and also the Apple M1 chip. As you can see, I'd recommend these first two laptops for Photoshop. InDesign and Illustrator. I would not recommend them for Premiere Pro. They just don't quite have the performance to do 1080p video editing. However, as you move into the Acer Swift 3, the Microsoft Surface Laptop 4, and the MacBook Air, I would definitely recommend some 1080p video editing. You might be able to get away with some very light 4K, but I I really don't recommend it. If you want to have more ceiling inside of Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator, I'd recommend getting up to 16 gigs of RAM. Because if you have 8 gigs of RAM, Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator, if you're trying to use them simultaneously, you'll bottleneck your computer. So if you want to be working on multiple apps at the same time, when you use a app, it takes away from the RAM. And that is, as you can see on the screen, 8 gigs for most of these laptops. A app can use anywhere from two to six gigs of RAM. So as you can see, if you open one program, you've basically almost maxed out your RAM at eight gigs. So that's why I think 16 is a great sweet spot for a design artist or photographer laptop. Now moving on to the next lineup, this is again still entry level, but we're moving into more of the 1080p capable laptops for video editing. We have the Asus ZenBook 14, moving up to the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360. Now these laptops, as you can see, most of them are coming with 16 gigs of RAM. And so I would be more confident recommending these laptops to really any designer who's gonna have multiple apps open during their workflow. Um, now, as you can also see, I start to recommend After Effects for some of these laptops. These laptops are gonna be capable of After Effects, but they're not gonna be able to handle big complex renderings. That's where you're gonna wanna get a laptop with a dedicated a GPU, which is going to come later in the video. Right now, these laptops that you're looking at all have integrated GPUs. The Apple MacBook Pro M1 is going to be probably one of the most powerful in regards to using After Effects in this lineup because of the SoC chip. Now, a quick caveat for both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. Because it has an SoC chip and unified RAM, 8 gigs is actually pretty good to get started for designers, photographers, and artists because the RAM is basically connected to the chip. It's called unified RAM. So where I would definitely recommend 16 gigs of RAM for an Intel or Ryzen laptop. I think eight gigs of RAM is a great starting point. And then 16 gigs of RAM is a lot more like 32 gigs of RAM on a standard RAM configuration. As we move up to the budget or mid-range category, you can see that these laptops have dedicated GPUs. And these are going to be the laptops where you're going to jump into definitely some 4K video editing and solid Afterworks projects. So there's going to be a lot of rendering capabilities in these laptops. The projects are going to run much smoother inside of the application. You're going to have really smooth play back for 4K video editing with these dedicated GPUs. Now, as you can see, these are all RTX 3050 or 3050 Ti's. So that means 4K is gonna run smooth, but as you get into 6K B-RAW and 6K RED footage, if you so happen to be doing that sort of projects, I'm gonna move you up to say like an RTX 3060 or a 3070, but these laptops are fully capable of the Adobe Design Suite, After Effects, and Premiere Pro without any issue. Now, as you get into more complex video editing projects with a lot of motion graphics and layers on your timeline, uh, you know, just a lot of different different effects, you might see some slowdown in the playback, but overall these laptops will be great for 4K video editing. Now as we move further into the mid-range laptops, we're going to again have more laptops with the RTX 3050s, and you see we have an RTX 3060 Max-Q from the Lenovo ThinkPad. Now between these two lists, I would say my favorite best bang for bucks are going to be the HP Victus or the HP Omen, the Lenovo Legion 5, and the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13. Those are probably my favorite picks personally. And as I move on to the second playlist, 
If you're somebody who's gonna be an artist and a bit of a video editor and designer, as you can see, the Acer Concept D3 Easel is a great pick as well. However, right now, I'm not seeing a lot of availability with the RTX 3050 Ti. Right now, I'm seeing them mainly with the GTX 1650. And for me, I would really wait for that RTX 3050 Ti if you wanna pull the trigger on that laptop. It's just better performing. It has probably about a 25% more performance out of the RTX 3050. So just keep that in mind. And if you're asking yourself, okay, with Ryzen 6000 right around the corner and Intel 12th gen, should I wait? In my opinion, waiting for 12th gen or Ryzen 6000 would be a good idea if you're not needing a laptop today because we're gonna see about a 20 to 30% increase in performance. But if it's really killing you and you're like, oh my gosh, I need a laptop, I need to get to work, I need to have projects I need to get done, don't wait. It really isn't worth waiting if you need to get moving and you need to get projects done. All right, a little caveat there. We'll move forward to the mid-range part two. And I would say the best bang for buck on this lineup for me personally is gonna be the Asus Zephyrus G4 14 and the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. Two very powerful laptops, two really good RTX 3060 and RTX 3070 laptops. I, I just can't recommend those laptops more. All these laptops on the list are great though. I don't recommend laptops that I don't believe in. And so really any of these will be a good choice. And if you're somebody who's like, okay, I see the laptops you're recommending, Ben. I have a laptop you don't have on your list. Why is it not on there? I just can't include every laptop, and so some don't make it on the list. But keep in mind, if you're seeing laptops here on the list that have very similar specs and components as the laptop you're considering, and it's in the specific lineup where you want it, for instance, with these laptops, these would be great for 6K B-RAW for maybe some red footage, but they're gonna struggle a little bit. So if you're doing some 6K video editing with B-RAW, you're doing some ProRes 4K, whatever it might be, and your specs match up with these, or they are these, then it's gonna be a good pick for you. Now keep in mind, these are estimated prices. So if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of any of the models that you're seeing on the lineup, definitely head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now next up is the Apple MacBook Pros lineup. Now these are really capable of any of the Adobe products. These laptops are very powerful, color accurate, fantastic machines. Now, however, unlike the Windows machines, these are not a upgradable post-purchase. So whatever you purchase the laptop at, those are the specs that you will remain at, which for me is somewhat of a bottleneck in future-proofing your workflow because if you're somebody who's simply maybe just doing graphic design at the moment and you didn't really see yourself getting into video editing, but like six months to a year down the road, all of a sudden you, you know, stumble upon a project and you start doing some video editing and you didn't purchase a laptop with enough RAM, let's say. Well, if you purchased a Windows laptop, you could simply upgrade the RAM and you'd have more performance for being able to swap that specific component. Whereas with these Apple MacBook Pros, the M1, the M1 Max, the M1 Pro, what you purchase is what you're going to remain with. So it's just something to consider. It's not a total deal breaker, but definitely keep it in mind. Now, next up on the list is going to be more of the mid to high end range laptops. My favorite laptop on this lineup is going to be the Asus ProArt Studio Book 16 with the dial. I think that this is one of the greatest wow. physical innovations of the past year or two, because it really does help improve your workflow. I have a full video on using the dial and a full review on this laptop. It definitely is a top pick for me. I'm a bit of a fanboy of it, just gonna be totally honest. And uh, I think it's a great price point for what you get, performance and technical innovation. Now keep in mind my one disgruntled opinion about this laptop is I wish this was a clickable trackpad rather than the manual click buttons. I don't like the manual click buttons, but still, that'd be my only complaint. It would be a perfect laptop for me if it was not those manual click buttons. I hope Asus makes a change on that next year. Um, but overall, these are gonna get you great performance, great color accuracy, and uh, will be great for the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. The Dell XPS 15 on this list is one of the more premium price point laptops. And that is not necessarily for the performance, it's for the build quality. So it's one of the most like astute build quality Build quality. One of the most astute in build quality as far as Windows laptops are concerned. It has an aluminum bottom cover, aluminum side panels, aluminum top cover, and that carbon fiber keyboard deck. I've owned a Dell XPS in the past and really enjoyed it. I think it's great build quality. It lasted me quite a long time. And so you're really paying for the prestige of build quality rather than maximum performance. It's still gonna have great performance. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's gonna have the i7 11 or 12800H and it's gonna have an RTX 3050 Ti, which is solid for 4K video editing, but it's not gonna have you know, the six gigs of VRAM or eight gigs of VRAM in an RTX 3070 um, or 3060, which gives you 
substantially more GPU power. Um, and then of course, one of the cool laptops on this lineup is the ZenBook Pro Duo with the dual screen functionality. I just think it's really neat to be able to have one screen with maybe all of your like panels and tools, and then your project is on the top screen. It can make it for a really nice workflow. Now, if you're curious about a deeper explanation of the specs for graphic design laptops or video editing laptops, definitely check out these two videos here and I dive deeper into that. Otherwise, links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you want to miss out on the future uploads. And I'll see you here in the next one.